George says, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Have to take my son to the gym. George, hurry up because you're missing some critical information. All right. So we've talked about the Dodgers. We've talked about the Giants. How about the Diamondbacks? And I start at the top. I'd like to give you their top player of the first half. It's got to be Cattell Marte. What a, what a start to the year for Cattell Marte. Did you draft him? Did you draft him for stolen bases? If you did, you're screwed. He only has four. But if you drafted him for home run and batting average and RBIs and runs scored, you're winning. You're a champ. 311 batting average. 20 home runs. 53 RBIs. 58 runs scored at the break. He's got hits in five straight games. 20 at-bats in those five straight games. Seven hits. That's a 350 average. Are you surprised at Cattell Marte? How much of it is Cattell Marte and how much of it is the new baseball? Because did you have any idea? Lenny said it on his show. The number of players who have hit 20 or more home runs at the All-Star break. It's astonishing. In the 50s. What if you looked at the players who've hit 15 or more? That would be a good question. Be a good homework assignment. How many players this year in the Major League the All-Star break have hit 15 home runs or more? But the number will keep, I mean, it's probably 100 or more. I'm going to try to look it up if I can get through this material I've got for you. But looking at Dimex, Eduardo Escobar, 296 average, 18 home runs, 67 RBIs. He went three for four yesterday. I mean, these are players that on draft day you were thinking, eh, they're good fill-ins. They're more than fill-ins. You know, you got David Peralta on the I.L. Is Jake Lamb going to have a big second half? Hasn't done it yet. Hasn't warmed up yet. But Jake Lamb is certainly a player who could get the opportunity. And if not, and here's Phil Chappie's favorite, Christian Walker hits in four straight games, hitting 263 on the first half, 17 home runs, 45 RBIs. All these guys I'm talking about have more than 15 home runs. And then there's the Rockies. Nolan Arenado, 312 average, 20 homers, 67 RBIs. He is 0 for his last 10, folks. Is he pressing too much? Charlie Blackman, 330 on the year, 20 homers, 57 RBIs, and 67 runs scored. We know all about them. I tell you, who's been a pleasant surprise has been Ian Desmond. You know, he's up to 274 on the year, probably available in some leagues, not NL only, but maybe in some others. 11 homers, 45 RBIs. I'd say you'd be pleasantly surprised you would take that, particularly with the start that he had. How about Ryan McMahon? Now, here's someone under the 15-home run mark. He's hitting 256, 7 homers, 20, 36 RBIs. In ESPN leagues this morning, only owned in 5.3% of leagues, and he's the second baseman going forward. You've got Rodgers on the IL at the minors. you got Hampson filling in, playing some, but hasn't had a hit since June 30th hitting 200 on the year. I mean, man's going to be your second baseman. So, that's a look at the National League West. Let's look at the, I may not get to the Futures game this segment. I may have to do that tonight. Okay, well, I got I got a show at 6 tonight. Excuse me, tomorrow. I may have to do a Futures show tomorrow and do the American League tomorrow morning. Uh, I, I got so much material, it's just stacking up, but I'm not getting through it fast enough. But anyway, I'm still looking in the chat room. If you guys have any questions, hey, send them in or comments. I'm ready. Trade discussions. I get, you know, I get a lot of trade questions sent to me on Facebook after my show is over. And, you know, after the shows are over, I'm working or doing stuff with my family or whatever. And sometimes it's hard to get back to you. Um, I try. But uh, now would be a great time while we're in the chat room. If you have any trade questions, send them on over. I don't know about your leagues and trade deadlines, but uh, I got a feeling those will be coming up within a month or so. 
Let's take a look at the Ameri- excuse me, National League Central players there and maybe a look at the second half. And what are the Cubs going to do? Now, I was listening on the weekend, Theo Epstein, Joe Madden, not happy with performance. I agree. They're 47 and 43. They're underperforming. And then you take a look at Javi Baez. And with him, the numbers are Javi Baez-ish. But I think he's got a, he's had some kind of attitude issues that the management is not happy with. But over the last six games, 28 at-bats. Javi, how have you done? Ten hits. So Javi Baez is hitting... Oh... 357 over the last week with two homers, six RBIs, four runs scored, 289 on the year with 22 homers and 62 RBIs. Clearly their best player, a player heating up, Chris Bryant, 297 on the year, 17 homers, 44 RBIs. His last three games, he's 7 for 12. for twelve. 556 average, his last three games heading into the break. Wilson Contreras at 286 in the first half, 18 homers, 52 RBIs. And how about this kid, Robel Garcia? Have you guys been watching him? Well, you ought to. He started on July 4th, Independence Day. Went three for five with a homer. Then the Cubs were off on Friday, played Saturday, went 0 for 2, scored a run, started yesterday, went 1 for 3 with another homer. So in those 10 at-bats, he's 4 for 10 with two homers, three runs scored. And I'm going to say Garcia looks like the kind of batter the Cubs love, the kind of player they want. And I could see him stepping in and Addison Russell bidding adieu to Chicago in the second half before July 31st. And if Garcia gets the regular at-bats at second base, he's also third base eligible in some leagues, he's worthy of an ad. In ESPN leagues this Monday morning, he is only owned in 6.8% of leagues. And so as I went through and I was picking through, I'm thinking, okay, here's a kid that may be worthy of an ad. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about Jason Hayward and his first half. He's becoming more like the Jason Hayward we used to know and love here of late. He's gone three for his last 12 with no homers, no RBIs. And that 250 average with no power is just not cutting it. He didn't play on the 3rd or 4th of July. He went 1 for 4 yesterday, 0 for 4 on Saturday. I think it's a bunch of hyperbole about uh, Jason Hayward. I'm not a big Hayward proponent. I just, if you have him, great. But I certainly wouldn't go trading for him. I don't think I'd go cutting him either. He's average. And that's about what you get. You get some average player when you get into Jason Hayward these days. Milwaukee, as I told you, half a game out. Yelich, out for the home run derby, said he's got a back issue. Okay, He's hoping to start the All-Star game. He's had back issues throughout the year. Are you concerned about Christian Yelich? And his back in the second half. I can tell you numbers-wise from the first half, a 329 average, 31 home runs, 66 runs scored, 67 RBIs, 19 stolen bases. And there's the differentia between Christian Yelich and, say, a Cody Bellinger. is the stolen base element that Yelich adds to the game. He's on pace to get 35 stolen bases. He's on pace to get 45 to 48 home runs, on pace to knock in 130, and on pace to score 130. Wow. For the reigning most valuable player, looks like he wouldn't mind having that belt another year. But some more players in fantasy that have been outstanding for Milwaukee. Yasmani Grandal at catcher in a year where catchers were not highly thought of at draft day. 
Grandal's hitting 260 with 19 homers. And of course, you know I love Mike Moustakas with his 263 average, 25 home runs. That's right, I said it. 25 home runs for Mike Moustakas at the All Star break. Oh, man, what an all-star snub that is. 53 RBIs. And Moustakas throws in three stolen bases, which you don't even think of. But from a downside for Milwaukee, here's a guy that's got to kick it in. Lorenzo Cain. Low Cain, 249 average, five homers. Come on, Low Cain. I drafted Low Cain, and about two weeks into the year, I thought, you know, it'd kind of be cool to have some more Houston Astros on my team. And so I offered Lorenzo Cain to an owner from Michael Brantley, and he accepted the offer. And I've been on top of the world looking down on creation, as Karen Carpenter would say, ever since on that trade. But you just know Locaine has the ability to rebound in the second half. And how about Keston Hura? Not really hitting as good as he was when they sent him down. Maybe he'll crank it up. He's He came back from AAA hitting around 280 at the major league level. His average has dropped 20-some points since his recall. Now, he has yesterday went one for four. He did hit a home run. So, you know, Hera's going to get the opportunities. He, he's been interesting this year in that when he has had high strikeout levels at the minor league levels, he has worked on his game, he has honed his craft, and he's cut down on the strikeouts. And I can see that happening in the second half with Milwaukee. Eric Thames seems to be the starting first baseman in Milwaukee. He is 0 for his last 11. I know it too well because I added him on my, one of my fantasy teams. But he does have 13 home runs, and he hasn't even been a full-time player. And what do you think about this Mauricio Dubon, the rookie shortstop that the Brewers called up over the weekend? He was called up over the weekend, did not start. The Brewers, Arcia, they don't, I'm not sure if he's on the IL this morning or not. But at any rate, Dubon had hit. 306 with 14 homers in 82 games at San Antonio. Figuring if they call him up, he's going to play. Just don't know with him how long he may be up. But if he's up and gets the opportunity, you know I'm all about opportunity and fantasy. Let's keep an eye on Mauricio Dubon. The Cardinals. Now, if there's been a disappointing offense so far in the first half this year, it's got to be St. Louis. And at the top of the list, it has to be Paul Goldschmidt. Probably a first or second round pick in many leagues. He's only hitting 254 with 16 homers at the break. But I will say he has a six-game hitting streak. And during that streak, he's got two homers, six RBIs. So is Mr. Goldschmidt living up to his name? And will he be back performing like Paul Goldschmidt in the second half? Another player, and this happens, it's like every year this happens. I'm getting tired of hearing so-called experts rave about Paul DeYoung before a draft. It happens every year. And this year you heard some, I heard some on some networks, I turned it off, saying, oh, you got to... Draft Young early. He's going to be second in that order. He's going to be great. Like, you know, enshrine him now in Cooperstown kind of stuff. Come on. Okay, Paul DeYoung is Paul DeYoung, and that's what he's going to be. He's going to be a 250, 260 hitter at best. He may hit 25 homers, but in this day and age, what is that? He's at 258, 13 homers, 36 RBIs. He starts hot. Yeah, the thing to do with DeYoung, if you want him and you can find a sucker to take him, is draft him late as you can, and after about three weeks of him performing, then trade him away. Not impressed, not carried away. I don't think DeYoung is the answer long-term at shortstop in St. Louis. Carpenter's been on the IL. Carpenter, and here's another one. 
How many times have you heard experts, so-called, say, oh, car-